Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to cook a nice chili over your forge. The two things that most blacksmiths don't have are time and money. But if you're standing in your shop for 12 hours a day, ma making a barely minimal wage, you still have to eat something. So what I want to show you today is how to make a proper, tasteful meal with healthy ingredients, but on a low budget level. And with minimal equipment in your shop over your forge. So ideally you want ingredients that last long, that can be stored in your shop and that are not too expensive. So for our chili the basis will be one pound of uh, half and half uh, mince, so it's 50% pork and 50% uh, beef. Then minced tomatoes chopped tomatoes, roasted peppers, a chili pepper, a little bit of garlic, spring onions, salt, pepper, some paprika powder, lime juice, red wine and a little bit of oil. Most of this stuff like the minced tomatoes and the chopped tomatoes, the peppers and all the herbs can be stored in your shop. They will last you for a very long time. Uh, you can make many many dishes with it. Also we'll only need one frying pan. That's and a chopping board and one or two knives. That's all you need. Uh, there's nothing wrong with minced and canned tomatoes. They are often even better than fresh tomatoes in case they would come from far away otherwise because these are uh, these are picked up fresh when they are like at their super ripe point and they are processed within a couple of hours and they have a lot of taste and a lot of uh, uh, still a lot of vitamins and all that in it uh, in contrast to uh, the vegetables and fruits that are being picked unripe and then shipped and then somehow riped with, with some gases and whatever so um, yeah that's a pretty good option so I'll start by chopping up the vegetables but first the spring onions just Cut them into nice discs. I really love spring onions to cook with. They are pretty cheap. You can get them everywhere and they are very flavorful. Also the chili pepper for added spice. Just sliced up. Chopped. And you 
you can do with these is just run the knife through them so you get nice little chops this will add some spiciness to our chili and also some of these roasted peppers Just slice them and dice them nice aroma and maybe one more I do have some tin foil here to prepare everything on. So you can just cover your welding table or whatever and just work on that. And I should have probably done the garlic first as long as that water is still dry anyways there's my garlic don't want to overdo the garlic just so you add a little bit of flavor. To your food. All right, so next, I want to prepare the mince. And uh, for that, I'll get another little bit of tin foil. So what you want to do with the mince is season it with a little bit of sea salt, pepper, paprika powder,
just a little bit of oil. And some lime juice. Now really get it well worked in. I really hate nothing more than when people put mince just like it comes out of the box into some sort of dish and you know you have that wormy like texture it's really not nice I like like it when it's like really worked through and more like a patty texture than this wormy mince texture Put that in the pan later. Cooking over a coke fire is a lot of fun because it is a very active thing to do because even if you really close it up and put it to the lowest heat possible it's still extremely hot and you will have to move your pan off of the fire if it starts to get too hot. So we'll start. by adding a little bit of oil to the pan. And I'll start to fry the onions. You can also season those already, a little bit of salt and pepper. they don't stick to the ground. Now you can add the roasted and peeled pepper. Also make sure to sear this nicely.
and uh, if those are seared a little bit, you can add the garlic and the chili pepper. Just also fry them a little bit. You don't want to burn the garlic because then it's going to turn into that bitter, bitter, bitter flavor that's not very nice in your food. Kind of ruins the whole dish then. If you have a coke fire like here, you really don't need to worry about any poisonous fumes or whatever that get into your food. Of course, if you have a charcoal fire, it would be even more ideal. Um, if you're using the cumulus coal, I would really let it coke over to so make sure there are no tar fumes and Sulfur and phosphorus that get into your food. I, I wouldn't say you can't do it at all, but you'll have to wait until it's really coked over. And yeah, I mean you can get a camping stove or whatever in your in your shop too. They are not so expensive, and you can get like one or two more plates to work with if you want to make more sophisticated meals. So now I make a little dent in here. Now I'll add the meat. So the meat will start to fry. I kind of just as it gets hotter and more brittle, I just work it apart. I'll make sure it does not stick. If it gets too hot, take it off of the fire. Don't want to burn your food. Can add a little bit of oil too. And you can progressively work the vegetables back into the meat. Make sure to not spill as much as I do. So now there is quite a lot of liquid that runs out of the meat and I will let that reduce a little bit so I can fry and sear the meat a little bit to get that 
little bit of roasted aroma. There's one problem you don't got on your forge, is too little heat. I mean, you could get this frying pan yellow hot, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna cook in that. So once you fried your meat a little bit, you can add the liquids. These are already chopped, peeled, and parboiled tomatoes. Wonderful to work with. Totally fine, fast ingredient. It's healthy and it's really, really cheap. Second can here. And that too. Season with sea salt. Pepper. some paprika powder. So and once the liquid starts reducing, it's time to add the red wine. Uh, if you like live in a dry country or if your religion forbids alcohol, you can uh, use like grape juice. All we want is that flavor that it gives. It's uh, it adds that fruity, both a little bit acidy, but also sweet, fruity flavor. And uh, also a little bit of, a, depends on the wine, a smoky flavor or a salt. And I think it really peps up your food if you, I, I really like to cook with, with red wine and the alcohol is going to steam off anyways.
that gets too hot, take it off the board. Let it cool down a little bit and add it back. Also put some lime juice in here. And you really want to work with all those different flavors, but don't over exaggerate because then everything is going to blend just into one sort of strange, plain super flavor. You want to be able to taste the different nuances of what you put into your food. Now you can already start tasting it. Mm -hmm. That's actually seasoned pretty much to my liking. So I will just let it reduce a little bit more and then we are done. Oh and uh, these cans are wonderful to put like punches and chisels and all that into. Just wash them out and you have nice tool holders. That's cooked enough. In terms of what you have to clean up, I only used this frying pan, the spoon, the chopping board and the two knives. And instead of bowls, I just used the tin foil that you can just throw away. Of course, if you have a dishwasher in your shop, you can reduce litter and just use bowls for that. But yeah, you will have to do only very little cleaning up. You can just eat it straight out of the pan. You know, simple, not so much work, not so much cleaning up to do, and in your forge. I will take that portion home with me, but uh, one tip I can also give you to save time on washing dishes is you see that very often in southern Europe like like France or Portugal um, you take a little bit of uh, baguette or bread and you know you just scoop up the residues and you can eat that tastes wonderful and it already cleans your cutlery and your kitchen dishes and whatever very nice So I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. You see you can also with only very little material and uh, for very low cost um, cook yourself something very nice in your shop. Uh, I know that if I would have driven to a McDonald's or some other sort of junk food 
uh, joined, uh, I would have paid more money and I would have taken more time. So uh, I hope some of you will now start to make some uh, nice and proper food in your shop. If you eat properly, if you eat good food, if you eat enough food, um, you know, uh, and if you take in the, the, the right amount of uh, nutrients, you, s you feel better, you work better, and uh, you will stay healthy longer and uh, general, generally you, you will feel better. So um, maybe take that to your heart. And um, if you would like me to make more videos like that, I mean, if I'm in my shop, I will have to cook for myself anyway. So why not just, you know, have the camera rolling. So uh, if, if you guys like that, let me know and see you in the next video. Bye bye.